Well, Happy New Year everyone. It's the 1st of January 2012. Just thought I'd show you around the garden, see what's looking okay. See how things have been over wintered. So we've got the Dixonia stump with the Splenia nidus fern still hanging on there. I'm not expecting them to get through winter, but I'll leave them there while they still look okay. A couple of Emilias looking okay as well. The rest have been taken out. Forming yellow wave, recovering from last winter's damage. A couple of Akubas and ferns there. All the plants have just died down. There's a little ginger under that leaf litter. Hostas died down for winter. Brunra Jack Frost. That'll perk up soon. The Aces. Nice Fatsia Japonica. With a few little berries forming at the top there. The ground ferns. Hardy. Hardy ones there. Looking okay. All the spring bulbs and flowers will come out in the next two or three months. You come is under there. Dahlia's under there. Gunra. Got some nice berries there. But as you can see, there's not much there compared to summer. That's what it looks like now. This is what it looked like back in summer this year. Got the nice bamboo that came from next door. It's grown through and it's bushed out really well after I cut it back down to the ground when I first moved in. Got the nice colourful leaves of the Tetrapanex Rex. Got the recovering Trachycarpus fortuni. So now we've got several new spears emerging. It's not stopped growing yet. Which is good because it was like spear pulled last year. You can see the middle leaf is still green and all these flower heads are ready to emerge if it stays mild. But the rest of the leaves have blackened off now because it's ever minus 2.5. It's quite warm, well, it's 10, 10 11 degrees at the moment. But it is raining. It's been very wet and mild winter so far. We've had about five frosts since November the 1st this year. Nothing major, about from the 2.5. You can see next to it the Milianthus, still green and fresh and growing well. You can see back there there are some canners just left to their own devices. If they come back, fine. If they don't come back, I'm not too bothered. Moves a baju in there. I'm sure it's definitely okay. Probably been trying to grow it last few months because it's been wrapped up since the end of October, but it's been quite mild since. It's all wrapped up in the straw. Various of the plants with mulch on. You see the straw mulch on the Milanthus. Here we've got one of those fleece bags, which inside here. Got my very sickly boot here. Which, if it survives, great. If it doesn't, not too bothered because it's got a scale insect on it. It's been quite hard to get rid of. It's made all the growth look really sickly, yellow and spindly, but hopefully it might recover. Inside the house, we've got some alocasias, 
little bananas, colour cages, losing most of the leaves, just keeping one or two per stem because there's not much light. Some Trachycarpus princeps and Marchianus in there. Gingers. And then further up, you can see the Lancasia patora in there. And the Onsete, Monte. And now it's going right to the to the ceiling. So we move around to this side. Trachycarpus. It's wrapped pot. A hookah down there. They look fine. The aces about the leaves, obviously. Behind the greenhouse, we've got this eucalyptus which has been in the garage until yesterday. I've taken it out because um, it needs a bit more light and it's completely dried out. I've had to cut the top off because it withered away. But this bit looks okay. Hopefully, it'll survive. Cordyline seedlings down there. And a big tree lily pots under there as well. It's grew, I think, about seven, eight foot this year. Did really well. Hoping for the same later on this year. So this is where most of my palms are in the garage. So we've got washes, we've got chemo at Got a new little bromeliads. One bromeliad there. Just got my stelias here in the versa. Got my yucca. Got all sorts of bits and bobs in here. Let's see if we can climb in. Got a big jabea there. I've got my recovering straight green chemorop similis. It's spear pulled and only started showing growth. Very late on last year. What else we got? Got the tea campestris palm down there. Very slow growing, but it's doing okay. I've got more Cumrox humulus. Got a little phoenix palm that I rescued from B and Q a couple of winters ago. It didn't grow any leaves last year, it just stayed still. But hopefully it will actually grow this year. Got some more Musa As you can see it's kept all its leaves. Got a few more in pots over there. Another Jabea there. Got a small Tetrapanex Rex there with its leaves. Um, Got Orophyllus trachycarpus palm there, and it's nice leaves. Nova, the Serifera. And I've got a nice Hidicium greenii ginger here, it's still growing, it's still fresh leaves at the top there. The one in the house has gone crispy and dry because it is too warm, it is pretty close to a radiator. I'll just compare in those, see how the overwinter compared to in the garage. So far the one in the garage looks a lot better. But we've not had the cold temperatures yet. What else have we got? We've got the Cycas Revoluta there. We've got a Decirion Longisium there. Brea Edulis. We've got um, Livingstonia, Australis, some little waggies in there. I've got a washy robusta. Got a Briar Amata at the back there. Got a Mani Pure in there. Basically, there's a load of stuff. There's a Seafia Australis back there, and Delbata, tree ferns. As you can see, there's lots of lots of my plants are in here. They've been here since. Mid mid October and they'll come out probably March April time. It's a long time. There is a couple of well one or two of these lights. They come on for a few hours each day. Got a little window there which is north facing, so it doesn't give much light at all. And there's a 
and the door, a bit of light coming in, but again it's north facing. So the camera's probably making it quite light in here, but it is pretty dark. I think I've also another banana through there somewhere. Let's have a look. You can just see the leaves there of another banana. Looking okay, Lassio Carpa. Masella Lassio Carpa, still growing. Not been watered for a month or two. Right, so let's leave the garage. Let's have a look in the greenhouse. What have we got in here? Right, got my Geneva, on set of Geneva banana there. Lots of gingers. I've been growing from divisions, which have shot up to about five, nearly six foot. Aeoniums. Some more palms in there. Princeps. Carrier. Phoenix. Alfredii. Little cuttings that I did. Some coloured cages in there. I mean, most of them are looking okay. Some are just down to one leaf, like this um, diamond head colour cage, which is beautiful black pleated leaves. Some are looking better than others. This, well, it's two or three of these, these um, Colocasia Gigantia. I'm not going to bother with them again, even though it's been kept at minimum 8 degrees in here. Most of the time it's about 12 degrees in this greenhouse. It's lost all its leaves, it's pretty much rotted back down to the ground. If I touch that, it'll probably fall over. It will grow back from the ground next year, but to be honest, it's not really worth it. I want something that actually looks good without it being really really hot. If you can't survive at 10-12 degrees then I don't think it's worth growing in, in the UK to be honest unless it's indoors in a really hot greenhouse. What else we've got? More bananas tie black there. We've also got a little sheffler down there. More collar cages. Loads of tracky carpus ceilings down there. They're fine. That's my little heater, one kilowatt heater. Comes on every so often. And down there, unfortunately, I forgot to water because it's been on the fan for quite a long time when it's been cold. I've not watered my Siafir. I've not watered my Siafir Medullaris and most of the leaves have gone crusty and brown the only one that survived is the second newest one and the newest one which is poking out over there so the plant's still alive but it's lost all but one and a half leaves again more little gingers and all sorts down there that I forget to water hopefully they will survive so that's the greenhouse, oh, and some little arids up there as well, which are doing fine. Just come round to the side of the house, just planted up all these tubs with tulip bulb yesterday. still got a can of there that I've not protected. Again, if it survives, great. If it doesn't, I've got quite a few more in reserve. I'm just look in this side cupboard. You'll see my canners I'm overwintering in here in sand. They look fine. It's a little white, creamy at the bottom. There's either a little can of poking out white there, trying to grow. There's no rot or anything on there, so I'm quite happy with them. The sand's kept quite moist. I've only had to water it twice, which is not bad. Canner in there as well, which is okay. Still got plump tubers there. What else have we got in here? Eucomis bulb dried off and just stored there for winter. Up top on this shelf. Just about to see a few Ancetai bananas. If I just pull one down. 
Now this one's looking a bit dodgy. I had to cut the top off because it did go furry mouldy and a bit wet at the top. But it's dried out, it's still got a bit of weight to it, it's still got a lot of liquid inside. And hopefully that one will come back. Now the other two are looking a lot better. Oh, maybe if you've not done this before it might look a bit horrendous looking at this, thinking how's that going to survive? And it's really hard and dry now. There's no sign of life on that at all really, apart from if you look at the top. You've got some very pale leaf roll at the top which shows it's not quite dead. That can survive for up to eight months like that. So we'll see how The lowest go. temperature recorded just there, that temperature probe is, is five degrees. Most of the time it's about ten degrees. Right, so we'll go around to the front garden now. It's starting to rain quite heavily now. As you can see it looks quite different from how it looks in the summer. That's where my big pot display was, and that's how it looked. And this is how it looks now. The middle bed still has the gazanias. You can see, still got plenty of flowers on them because they've not been killed by frost yet. Which is looking good. Still got cacti in there which I'm just letting rot away basically. I'm not bothered about that one, just as bedding. I've also got lots of little house leeks that are completely fine and hardy. Got the yucca gloriosa variegata. Which is laughing at this weather. It's nothing like as cold as last year's weather, and that didn't bother it at all either. A couple of things with protection on. You've got a little echivera with that little glass bowl on top of it to keep the the wet off it, and that looks fine under there. I'll show you that. It's fine under there. These cacti are fine. Imbricata, there's one there, one over there. Doesn't mind the wet and the cold. This little one, this little bailey eye, just put the little rain shelter on. Because it is very small, I don't want it to get too wet. See how mild it's been. So it's Aeonium looking completely fine, undamaged, although it's minus two and a half in the back garden. The front garden is a bit warmer, it warms up earlier as well. And just behind that, we've got a little sunflower. It's just germinated the last few days, shows how warm it's been. So all these pots, it's got tulips in, red flower in April. So the front garden is looking bare, just over there. That's where all the cannas were, they've been covered over with soil mound and also some bark chippings on top. Planted some more bulbs in there as well over the top of the canners. Got a nice fancy spider's web here, really nice coloration. Sadly none of the, the flowers have formed any berries. If you just look underneath, we've got a really nice variegated plant growing underneath. Really white. Beautiful coloration down there. Got the bamboos. The smaller pots have been protected with bubble wrap, and the rest have all been put next to the house wall. Obviously, they're unfazed by the weather, just the wind. Gonna make the leaves go a bit brown and crispy on some of the species, but most are looking okay. Another fats here, again, this is variegator. No. Berries forming on that, unfortunately, as I tried to cross them with the other two. And there we have it. That's the garden, pretty bare. But hopefully, another six months, it will be looking fantastic again. All the very best growing for 2012.